All right, greetings each and every one of you. I'm Apostle Charles Ellis here at HLT Studios. You're here in the city of Plano, Texas. We're going to get into this particular morning prayer this morning with the Word. And we're just going to hear what the Word of God is saying in these trying times that we all deal with in different areas of the state. It's not here in the state of Texas. There's some things going on somewhere else in the world. Or there's some kind of condition that's going on in the life of individuals to the point we got to trust in God and know that he's the conqueror in our life to help us move to whatever conditions that may try to alienate us and make us feel opposite of what his word uh, told us. You know, what God tells us, we think about the scriptures. He said, I came that you may have life and have life more abundantly. So we got to believe and trust that his word has given us the opportunity to know and declare and decree that when we're going through what we call uh, diversities or trying times or circumstances or situations, that God's word is more able to do what he said he's going to do. You know, he says, it's not a God that he should lie. He says, it's not a son of any man that he should have to repent. You know, the commandments has been given to bless, and he said he will and cannot reverse it. Let's go ahead and look at this word over here in the book of uh, Romans um, chapter 8. As we give reverence to the Lord for giving us the opportunity to just to come before his throne after getting up in the morning, rising early, and just putting on the whole armor. We speak out the word of God according to the book of Matthew, um, chapter 6, and that particular, which is my great, uh, 9, that chapter 8, uh, 6 and 9, you know, is uh, the model prayer, our Father who art in heaven, you know, how that be thy name. So we're asking the Father of God to look over us as we go forth right now stern and steer the word father god in the name of jesus lord forge it in your fire through the process of the power of the holy spirit father god even as we continue to do this small short uh, bible study this morning let it be an impact in the hearts of the people who are going through what we call stressful times uh, diversities issues whatever it may be you said you're not a god that you shall lie and your word is declared and decreed that whatever we ask you for, according to Psalm 34, 11, you will provide because you said you're a God is a son and a shield. You said no good thing you'll hold from those that said we walk upright. Over in the book of Romans, Romans chapter 8, in the book of Romans chapter 8 and 28, and it says that we know that all things, let's really uh, pay attention to that process that he says all things. Because when you look at all things, you take your marker and you look at that word of God. And it says all things. It kind of takes you back over to Jeremiah 32 and that 17th verse. The word of God says, is there anything too hard for me to do? He said, really, he says, I with my stretched out arms. I created the heavens and the earth. And is there anything too hard for me to do? Notice what he says right here. He said, and we, who is the we? Who is the we? Those who are called to the purpose of doing what God has called them to do. In other words, walking in the will of God, walking in the obedience of God. So when you look at this scripture in its entirety, just starting off, he said, and we know. So the Bible said, well, we walk upright. And he says, nothing he would hold from us. We got to have assurance to know that when we walk with Christ, we believe and understand in the midst of our walking upright, God promises is not void. In other words, he says over in the book of Isaiah 55, 11, he said, every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God goes forth and it doesn't come back void. But the word of God tells us that we're going to have to know in the midst of our trying times, just sticking it out in this particular first verse. You don't really need to go a whole lot of, you know, anywhere. You can just look at this particular first, this just this one verse. I give you a whole lot of information about how God uh, uh, deeds you as being a part of his, um, uh, his kingdom. That when you walk right, when you confess the word of God, and it says in Romans 8, uh, 10 to 9, you know, when we look to him. We know that he's the author and the finish in our faith. The word of God tells us in Romans 10, 8, 9, that he said, what says out the word of God? He speaks about the word. And we understand the word of God. You build a foundation on the word with the aspects and not just the fruits with an S. It's a fruit. Love is a fruit. It has to manifest. It has to grow. These are things that pushes out the very negativity that's in you that we are know and understand in the midst as we're going forth. We're producing the type of harvest that's edible. In other words, I'm making myself demand to a point that I can speak in the lives of individuals and knowing that when I speak, I'm not perfect myself, but I'm trying. The Bible said you got to try, you know, to try of your faith. The trying of your faith birth patience. He never said you were perfect. This is why you got to lean on him in the midst of circumstances, situations, and events that's going on in your life. 
because the word of God tells us, when we go back to Romans 8 and that 28, he say, and we know that all things, come on somebody, all things work together. He didn't say separately. He didn't say no man can be an island. This is what, this is what Aaron speaks about in Psalms 133. He said, how good is it for men to dwell together in unity. That means men and women, unified. Iron sharpens iron. This is what you got to understand. He says that we know that all things work together for the good, not only certain conditions, you know, but you got to understand it's got to be a condition. That condition really, when you take your mind, you think about it, you got your pens and paper, that, what is that condition? That condition is really over in Psalms 1. Psalms 1 says, blessed is a what? A man or a woman that walk away not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way. He's setting the perimeter of blessings, if you can follow these guidelines, nor stand in the way of a sinner, nor sit in the seat of a scoffer, but his delight should be what in the law of the Lord, and in the law, excuse me, does he meditate day and night. Now he tells you you should be like a tree that flourishes by the rivers of water. Why am I flourishing? Because I'm constantly being fed in the guidelines of the Holy Spirit. This is one of the conditions that we talk about over here in the book of Romans 8 and 28, that all things work together for the good of those who love God is a, and to them who are called according to his purpose. Now, you got to understand what the purpose is. The purpose tells me, according to Psalm 34, 11, if I walk upright. This is my Proverbs 10 and 22. This is when I fall into Psalms 1. This is when I become a blessed man with the areas in my life that God has already redeemed and declared and decreed. According to Isaiah 55, 11, this word won't go back void. That even in the midst I mean, going through these circumstances, situations in my life, you can just look over and go over the book of Psalms chapter 5. And one of them, you talk about Psalms chapter 5, Psalms chapter, uh, not Psalms chapter 5, but uh, uh, Romans chapter 5, so therefore being justified by faith. Now, the word of God says you're justified by faith. The Bible talks about you got to walk in faith. Hebrews speaks it very clear in Hebrews 11. He says, I can't see it, but I believe it. With the hope and expectation. That I can bring what's I can bring whatever is out of sight in the sight. In other words, I got the ability to call things in position. That be not though if they were. It's the same thing as you walking right with God with the aspects of knowing that all things, all things work together for the good. Not only just for uh, me, you, or anyone else, for anybody who really loves God. The believer walks on another level, another condition, another a ramification. He don't walk with the area where you see the physical. Men think you've got it going on and get, you got this, that, and the other because they look at the physical. No, it's the heart. We understand the conditions of the heart, then we see clearly now that whatever rainfall is in our lives that causes us to stumble in life, the Bible declares we got to count it all joy when we're going through various trials. The Bible says these things don't come to hurt you. He said, think it not strange. So you're a part of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is going to suffer violence. The violence is taken by force. And the word of God indicates and declares there. As I look back over here in this particular scripture, <clears throat> over here, I'm sipping on my coffee with you guys as well as I'm talking. So, want to get a real good understanding of this right here. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, look at this right here once again. Let's look at use the Romans 8 as our base. This is a base. It's a lot just to run off just the 28th verse. You don't even have to go down to the 29th or 20, even though it talks about great things. But if you can just get the revelatory or information, kingdom education or understanding, what he said that he gathers you together when you just take your, you just take your pen and pencil. He said, and we, you just got to circle in we. Well, who is the we? The we is those who trust in God. The word of God says, lean not to your own, but acknowledge him in all your ways. And then he gives you direction. That's in the book of Jeremiah 29, 11. If I only honor the thoughts and the plans I got for you. See, God got a plan for your life. But he said when you come together and you congregate with other great men of God and you go back to Psalms 1 and not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of the sinner, and then you got your Proverbs 10 and 22. That's the blessings that God has in store for you. Not from the physical aspect. God's blessings manifest. As your fruit develops, it becomes more greater for the pickings. What am I saying? People see your fruit. You can talk a good game all day long, but you can spit out some of the most foul stuff in the way that you carry and act. 
And God's not looking at you when you're in a position of people who can look at you and think you're something. He looks at your character. Character is constantly on the 24-hour alert. God look at you behind closed doors. You can't be a Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde. You do one thing at home, and then you come out in the church and be something else. You, you, can't, you can't be that way. As a matter of fact, God's not really looking at you when you're in among other people because, you know, we put on our best behavior. Then when we put on our best behavior, we can put on a mask to the point that that mask describes us as being something totally different when we're behind closed doors. Am I helping somebody? I just want you to understand what the Word of God says, and it speaks about this. And we know that all things, this is what it says, work together for the good. Just stay right there. That means if I walk up right, when my ways pleases God, desires come. Heart desires. Am I talking to someone? God's plan for your life is always more than what you can see. You got to really trust in God. You got to take away the physical aspects of what we call the five senses. And he speaks over there in the area of 1 Corinthians, and that particular 1 Corinthians. And you go around that particular 1 Corinthians, the second chapter, the ninth verse, he eliminates the aspects of the physical attributes. He said, These eyes have not seen, and ears have not heard. Listen to what he says. Neither. And my dad was somebody that neither means you can't get it from anybody. In other words, the information that God gives you is non-descriptive, non-disposable, incollectible, and non-distributable. You can't find it anywhere but through the kingdom of God. You got to go into the kingdom. You got to get on your knees and you got to trust God. You got to go into your secret place. This is the only way you're going to really get a good revelatory understanding from the kingdom of God. It's not for only outside, it's on inside. Jesus speaks about this particular area in the book of Luke when he comes out the field. And they come from a long journey from doing the work. And then his uh, disciples begin to pluck the buds off the grains. And they begin to eat them. And the Pharisees, in their uh, traditional ways, begin to look at them. And they begin to despise them. They look on them. They tell them about, your disciples don't wash their hands before they eat. Well, Jesus makes a very strong statement. He talks about the heart. It's not what goes in. What goes in is eliminated through the stomach. Am I there? And you know where that goes. It's waste. But the heart, that's what God looks at what comes out the heart. That when you come before God and you pray, the Bible said, look here, fervent prayers, am I there? A righteous man avails. It's, it's got some power behind it am I, with somebody. God is trying to get you to see in the midst of whatever you may be going through in your life. <laughs> the word of God said, you got to know that all things, am I there? Work together for the good of those who love God. Now, look at what he says over here in this particular second half of this. He says, to them who are called, look here, according to his purpose. According to his purpose means you got to be on the right line. You, gotta, you, you can't come in and be a generic. You, you can't be some, just some throwaway. Somebody told you something. You're going to have to know that you know, that you know, that you know. That means when you go into your secret place, like it says in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 6, and that particular ninth verse, the Bible declares before you get to the ninth verse, he says in the chapter in that Matthew 6 and 5, he says that when you pray, don't give me a hypocritical prayer. Don't be like someone who want to be heard. Because those people got their rewards. You want to make sure when you come in the presence of God because he already knows your heart. You want to give God your heart in the midst as you're praying, talking to him about issues, circumstances, situations, events that's going on in, on, and around your life. That's why the word of God comes back and said that he's, you've got to be called to the purpose, not just because of a title or position. We took out the fivefold, and I'm not neglecting the fivefold because I'm a part of the fivefold in that apostolic. I work hard in that. The word of God talks about the apostle, the prophet, talks about the evangelist, pastor, teacher. But the word of God said the first thing those particular people in the fivefold must have a foundation, and that foundation is fine, which we're going to be talking about a series here, dealing with the process of the nine gifts of the Spirit and dealing with the nine fruits in an S, but it's actually individual fruit according to Galatians 5 and 23. And the number one fruit he tells you to deal with for you to operate in anything in life is you're going to have to have love. God sees everything that goes on behind closed doors. You have those saying you can fool me once. You may fool me twice, you know, but, you know, shame on me. But, but see, when it comes down to you understanding that God knows you, he sees the things that you're dealing with. Some people really think, you know, they can hide from God. 
behind closed doors, speak, talk, gossip, and do all kinds of things. God sees those things. So we got to tailor ourselves. We got to understand what it says in the book of 1 Corinthians eleven twenty eight. 28. You got to go through a self-examination. God knows what's in your heart. God knows if you're generic because the fruit is going to display who you are. You ever walked up to a person and got the nicest smile on them, but it's something that you see in them. You can't really judge anybody. You just got to sit back and watch the fruit. After a while, whatever it is that you've been seeing has got to come to the surface. It's like when you pour a Coke or something like that, or pour a Sprite, or Dr. Pepper. You know, the content of what's solid in the bottom, but all the foam Rise up to the pop, uh, up to the top, but what you really need is in the bottom of the glass. That's how you got to look at individuals. You got to see what they're made out of. Sometimes you just got to hang around people. Don't say too much. Just watch and observe, and understand to realize that that person is really called to the court and the purpose of God. Then it's going to show. Am I there? I'm trying to help you here. The Word of God says once again. You look at this word over here in this particular uh, 28 verse in the second half. To them who love God. The first condition to loving God is to know his purpose. You got to know what the purpose of God is. Go back to Jeremiah 1 and 5, created, designed, born, and engineered. To be a prophet before the nation. That means to declare the word of God, whatever conduits he called you to be. Men can't hinder the talk of what you do. They can put all kinds of things together to make it seem like what they're doing to you is some kind of ritual to make you seem better. But when you talk to God about whatever it is in your life, you don't need anybody to approve you. You're already approved. You was approved when you was in your mother's womb. That's when you got to talk to God. You got to get in a position to understand that man want to bring accreditation over God's accreditation. That when you call by God to do a work that he called you to do, you don't need valid verification from men. Some people say you do, but that's fine if you want to do it. If you want to look at them to the point that they got you to where you need to be, then guess what? That's what you're going to deal with. But you got to find out and understand that in your life, now man makes up all kinds of slogans and doctrine to make it seem like you got to go through these particular purposes and all these things. But when God called you, you don't need to be revalidated or recertified. You just got to walk very in and believe and declare and decree that whatever God called you to be is really more than what you can see. I'm, I'm somebody listening. I don't know who it is, but you got to understand, quit struggling trying to prove yourself to what's an M-A-N or W-M-A-N and trying to get you to be or some kind of organization. You got to walk up right. You got to trust God in the midst of where you're going to believe and declare and agree that when God called you to do a work, it's really more than what you can see. He, he goes on down here and he says over in this particular area, a deal with the court of its purpose. He said the purpose is not ours. It's never our purpose, which is the second condition. Otherwise, we all will not work together our good or work together with the good for things that work together for the good. See, if we can't come together and be one, then it's no good. See, men want to be islands. They want to, I got my anointing, I got this, I got that. Well, the word of God contradicts that all the way around in the book of Corinthians, in the book of Galatians. The Bible declares, according to 1 Corinthians, he said, if the spirit has got to manifest in you, then that whatever gift God gave you from the time you was born, he did give you the direction to the gift. But you got to believe and understand when God called you to do work, you don't need men to validate you. Jesus declared the creed, I'm sent from the Father. According to John chapter 14, he said, if you don't believe me, then watch the work. What is he saying? Watch the things that I do and display down here on earth, not being valid by these Pharisees and these Sanhedrin councilmen. Watch the woman with the issue of blood. Watch Blind Bottom and Bayless. Watch the story about the man at the pool of Bethesda. Am I there with somebody? Watch what happened to Jairus. Listen to me. Look at the wedding feast. The things that God has performed in the midst that he was here on earth showed you that he was a valid proof that God sent him to do the work. This is why he tells you in the book of Hebrews chapter 12, I am the author, listen to me, and a finisher of your faith. Just as a person writes a book to the beginning and the end, Jesus came to show you how you're supposed to walk and finish out the chapters in your life. That when the end comes, you'll be welcome into the kingdom as being what? A great, well done, my son or daughter. You run up behind man. And they seem to look at you as being something invalid. That they want to get all the credit behind you. Then you find yourself falling into folly. Folly situations that lead you into all kind of ruins. Because it takes away the conditions what God told you over in the book of Romans chapter 8. For we know that all things, we know we said that. And we, those who are called, that's your Romans 10, 8, 9. When you, when you sacrifice yourself and give to God, you become a part of the we services, the we people. 
believers. I don't need to tell you about the story about the, about the ten virgins. We understood that purpose. But you got to understand how when God calls you, the ten, the ten virgins, that's a purpose to let you know that people who's not walking genuinely in the eyesight of God, that when the, pride, when the bridegroom do come, and they don't have the work which they had or didn't earn the pipe of oil that they need to be able to burn it down before God, to be that shining vessel here on earth, that kind of do it. And God's going to see you. And by the time, time the bridegrooms come, you, got, you can't ask nobody else for what they owe you. You got to work out your own soul to salvation with fear and trembling. Knowing and understand that you got to have trials in your life. And the Bible says trials birth patience. And patience, patience birth forth perfect work. They may have got to take my time. He said to those who love God, look at, to them, it kind of got used to say, in this particular second half of this particular scripture, when it says, and we know, but he comes down here and says, to them who love God, to them, listen to what it says, he's to them twice. To them that love God, then he say, to them who are called according to his purpose. Notice what he's saying. There's a certain people called to the purpose of God. They'll see people called to according to God. Then when you look at these two calls, they got to understand that you got to bear the fruit to understand that what's outside of you has got to be a representation of the kingdom of God. Because what's in you has to glow. Notice what he said. To them who love God. And then he said to them who are called according. There's a process here. There's a one, there's a one two, like a, a one hit a quitter. First, God wants you to understand that you love him. If you love him, then whatever he put in you, according to Jeremiah 1 and 5, will illuminate in you with the gifts of the fruits that goes along with that. Then we talk about in the book of Galatians, he talks about that meekness, goodness, love, joy. All that's got to be in you when you walk with any gift of God. I'm Apostle Charles Ellis here at HNLC Studios. We're going to just pray for the men and women of God that's around the world that's going to challenge and the change. And the Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we just declare and we decree that even in the midst of these trying times, wherever they may be, whatever the dilemma may be, whatever the circumstance or situation may be that's going on in their life, Father God, transform and change, Father God. Let the word be a convicting word. That whatever they are, Father God, you can reach them. Father God, you said your arms are not too far. Your ears are not too heavy. And I believe, Father God, in the midst of their prayer, Father God, that now when they pray, it does never touch the ground. Lord, I'm asking you to go in, Father God, stir up the gift that's in them. Let them realize and understand, Lord, Father God, we're living, we're living in what we call the last days, when issues are coming out, demarcations in weather, events, all kinds of sickness and diseases all around the world. Men are being troubled, invading, rambling, rolling, doing all these things, Father God, looting, and letting themselves know that the enemy is in the land, and we got to be protected, and we got to walk circumspectly as being men and women of God. To trust, believe, and declare, and decree, but not through a physical aspect, but through a spiritual aspect. It's not what's on the outside, but what's on the inside. That we realize and understand that in our life, the plan of God is more than what we can see. Father God, help us. That we come against any manifold problem. That you hear according to your word in Psalm 46, that you are very present help. In the very present time of need. Lord, I declare right now in the name of Jesus, these do not speak. I send the word out like a spike from the north, south, the east, and the west, that you will bring everything under subjection of the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And everything that's not following you, Father God, then you know the things you have to do to bring it in order. But I'm asking you, Father God, on this day, that you rise us up and see this morning, or this particular time of the day, Father God, put your heads around and protect us and keep us. Look over the Ellis family, Father God. Look over HNLC International Ministries, Father God, and the great work we are doing throughout all the world. Father God, continue to touch the hearts of men and women of God in the poor pitch in the sanctuary and all those doing the work. Then we may clearly know, Father God, we are not an island. Whatever gift you have given us, Father God, let us work to the fullness that we may see and understand that your plan for us is always more than what we can see. Father God, I thank you for this time, this moment. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I just decree and declare that even in the midst, as we go forth, Father God, everything you have revealed to us in the Spirit has got to come to full fruition. These things I speak not of myself, but the power of the Most High God. In the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, I pray God. Amen. Blessed be the man of the God. Hope to get a chance to see you on tonight as we go forth with the Lord here and after the Word of Until then, God bless.